everyone. As always, my name is Peyton Trollinger, and alongside of me is a different guest. We have our beloved Gary Smith on High School Roundup. How you doing, Gary? Well, Peyton, it's great to be here. This is like one of those things when you go to a, a musical or a play, you know, the understudy comes in, so our, our good buddy uh, Johnny's taking care of some stuff with his car, getting the Gooch Mobile fixed back up, so uh, he couldn't be here today, so I'm going to fill in trying to do my best Johnny impersonation and help bring all the information to, uh, to the masses for High School Roundup because, Peyton, we had one heck of a Friday night. Yes, we did. You know, uh, we had Bell Vernon versus Ringgold. It uh, went a little bit longer than what it was should have, but we got the game done and over with, so we're going to check out some highlights right now. Yeah, Peyton, you mentioned uh, at this time it was everything was all, all guns a-blazing, no rain in the forecast. We knew there was a chance of rain. Uh, as it played out, there was more rain, but uh, raining in the first drive right here, Devin Whitlock showing why he's one of the best players in the WPL, gets Ringgold, or excuse me, Bell Vernon on the board. But then a little trouble for the Bell Vernon offense, a jet sweep that miscommunication and uh, Ringel gets possession deep in Bell Vernon territory with a lot of running, nothing happened. But then see Whitlock again on the quarterback scramble, makes a cut, looks like he's gonna break into open field, gets caught from behind, and boop, there's the fumble, and Ringgold once again set up, and this time, they will not let the opportunity uh, escape. You can see right here just the point the ball comes out. A lot of people in the press box thought the runner was down, but I think if you looked at that replay a couple of times, the knee was just up. But as you see, Oslowski just going around the left side. Young man is a beast as a running back and uh, linebacker for Ringgold. Ties the score up, as we see right here. Look at this block by the left side of the line, and then big number 33 escorting Oslowski into the end zone for the touchdown. That ties up at 7-7. But before the end of the first half, uh, Bell Vernon on the ground games tries to get it going, but not before they get annihilated. And you see Oslowski right here on defense just timing the block. Excuse me, that was not Oslowski, that was 44. But later on in the drive, before the end of the first half, the Woodlock showing off the arm, gets something in the flat to his man out of the backfield. Will make a couple men miss, get to the 10-yard line, and then a pitch to the left will find his blocks and get into the end zone. That'll make the score 14 to seven go, going into halftime. And then in the third quarter, after a two hour delay in which we saw a lot of things happen in the press box sideline, second or third play, long 40 some yard touchdown run to make it 21-7. And then later on in the third quarter, another broken tackle, broken run. It's showing why this young man is going to be playing on Saturdays in the near future. Gets an escort from his offensive line, gets inside the 10 deep into the red zone. Next play is going to with the man in motion. We'll make it a 28-7 lead just right up the middle. Simple football. Cuts to the outside. Whitlock makes it 28-7. And then Ringle, to their credit, they do not stop. Uh, gets a late touchdown. Make it 28-14 with a little under five minutes left to go. We see it on replay once again. Just a great job. Misdirection, but also the left side of that line firing just enough. One man blocking two players. Makes it 28-14. But Bell Vernon puts the uh, capper on a long, long night. Again, on this replay, watch this block by number 10 and number 19, just getting into a, enough of a, a block to get the opening. And that's gonna cause the final score to be 35-14 at about 11.35 in the evening. So the game started at seven o'clock, ended at 11.35, two hour rain delay. Uh, Peyton and myself and the crew got to the site about 4.30. So a very long afternoon, but <laughs> Tell you what, Peyton, Bell Vernon is showing why they're probably going to be a one one seed in this uh, upcoming WPL playoffs. You know, Gary, the, uh, that 3A interstate conference, it's a very tough conference, and, you know, you got your top teams. You got Bell Vernon, LH kind of fell a little bit, TJ's up there too. But like I said, it's a very tough conference. But what I was very surprised about is Ringgold. Ringgold did a very good job at staying in that game, and, you know, they did not let Bell Vernon breathe there before the rain delay. And honestly, the rain delay, I mean, it helped Bell Vernon, but before that, Ringgold kept up with them. It's a very defensive game. And, you know, the Rams got the short end of the stick, but I think they played a very good game. Well, going into that game, I mean, obviously, Bell Vernon Ringgold is a huge rivalry in the Mon Valley. It's been like that for years. Um, so you knew that no matter if it was going to be a blowout or not, Ringgold wasn't going to quit. And I think even when we were getting there, the fans were kind of resigned to the fact they thought Bell Vernon was going to run around, but, or run over them. But uh, Ringgold, uh, forcing a couple turnovers and, and kept it close for a while. And I, I, for a while, I know we were talking in the press box, thought maybe this could have been the upset of the week. But unfortunately, uh, if you're a Ringo fan, uh, they got the loss. But again, seeing Bell Vernon 
play firsthand. You know, they're a legit team, and mm -hmm. I'm a, a, a curious to see what other legit teams we have coming up on the scoreboards here. I'm also very excited, too, so let's get on with the scores for the rest of the WPIAL. Uh, first, we have Thomas Jefferson traveling to Laurel Highlands. Absolute blowout here. Thomas Jefferson coming away with the win 42 to 3 over the Mustangs. And that is not a good look for the Mustangs at all. But, you know, TJ's just always been a good team. Well, TJ's trying to erase the, uh, the sting of that loss to Belvern a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're a team that wants to uh, stay in the, the mix in that, um, in that conference. I believe it's the Big 8 conference, not the interstate. Um, but uh, they're definitely going to try and get that number two or number three seed in the playoffs. Indeed they are. Let's take a look at some other scores around the league here. We have Woodland Hills traveling to Franklin Regional. Woodland Hills coming away with the win on the road, 37-21. to Up next we have Connellsville traveling to Latrobe. Latrobe coming away with the win at home, 55-13. to and that's also another comp, I believe that was another conference game right there. Another key win for Latrobe. Yeah, no surprise there as we move on. Penn Trafford and a close one over Gateway. Gateway down for the last couple years, they're starting to come back up. And Penn Trafford has always been a pretty good program in that conference, gets the five point win. And then McKeesport uh, always has been a, a powerhouse. West Mifflin had been up for a while, but they are not having a great 2021 season. 41 to nothing. McKeesport got the win as we're going to take a look at the next set of scoreboards. And I'm interested to see what happens here. There's the TJ LH game again, but Armstrong, the Flames over Greensburg Salem. Don't think uh, anyone saw this coming. Maybe the win, but not the margin of win 33 16. Very impressive win for Armstrong as we go into some more scoreboards here. We had Gary's Brownsville Falcons, was supposed to play Mount Pleasant. Brownsville, unfortunately, was able to forfeit that game. Yeah, actually, there was a, a, a couple players. Uh, when COVID protocol, so there was oh. not enough players to, to safely field the team. So uh, Mount Pleasant was the recipient of a official one nothing win, a very uh, weird one, uh, weird score, and also forfeit has an E at the end. Uh, but that, and I did not write that because I'm a horrible typist. Uh, but yeah, that was the issue. Brownsville had some players uh, go into protocol and could not field the team. And then EF, we saw them earlier. Uh, as we get the correct spelling up there. We saw them early against Brownsville. That's a legit team that's coming along mm -hmm. at the right time. Elizabeth Ford is a powerhouse now in that interstate conference there. Uh, you know, they were able to get the win over South Allegheny 36 to seven. Let's continue to look at some more scoreboards here. Yacht, the Yacht Cougars travel down to South Moreland to play the Scotties. Scotties able to come away with the victory 35 to seven quite easily. And then we had the Buccaneers of Short Tears Houston traveling to Periopolis to play the Frazier Commodores. Commodores not able to get the win at home. The Bucks win 34 to seven. And Char Houston's really putting on, on some teams in that conference, uh, a lot of big scores. And they're, they're trending up at the right time, about four or five more weeks left in the season. Actually, four more weeks in the high school season. So season's coming to the end. We're gonna look at some more scoreboards here on the roundup. And then best center, Getting a win at Shallower, 39-22. And we were talking about that game uh, during one of the rain delays, thinking what was going to happen. And, you know, best center ground-oriented offense, just putting up the points over your Shallower Cougars. And then McGuffey in a uh, uh, conference matchup, just putting the, the wood to Waynesburg, 55-22, 33-point margin of victory. So hopefully you bet the overpaid. Oh, I, I went there. <laughs> Unfortunately, not with the best center shoulder game. The Cougars didn't come away with the win, but you know it's been a rough season for them. But I think they can turn it around maybe next season, hopefully. We continue to look at some scoreboards around the league. We have the Bentworth Bearcats traveling to West Green. The Bearcats getting blanked here 56 to nothing in favor of West Green. And then we have uh, another, uh, we had a 1A matchup between the Trojans up the road and the Rockets of Jefferson Morgan, California, coming away with the win on the road, 47 to 12. And let's not sleep on West Green. We've seen the last couple weeks, they've been putting up some points. And in that single A conference, if a team gets hot, they can uh, mm -hmm. take it pretty far. So uh, but that's going to be interesting to see the standings in the next segment. And we have a couple more scores here, some more uh, 1A scores, actually. We had the Mapletown Mapes traveling to Avella School District. Mapletown getting the win 45 to 16. 
And then we had the Greyhounds traveling up to Carmichael's to play the Mighty Mikes. Carmichael's getting the win at home, 40 to six over the Greyhounds. Let me tell you what, Carmichael's has been a very hot team this year. Well, they've been a hot team, and the thing is they're fundamentally sound both sides of the ball. And you know, we, we've all seen football in uh, high school, college, and pros. If you can take care of the ball and stop the other team from scoring, that's a pretty good recipe for success as we move on to some more scores. Um, Uniontown, Washington, that was postponed. Not sure why that game was postponed, um, but it was. So that game uh, may be played Uniontown. Uh, not a member of the WPL this year, as we've, we've said before, so that may, game may not be replayed. And then uh, University High playing the Colonials of Abergalton and University going across the Mason-Dixon line to get the 36-14 win over Colonials in York Run, PA. Well, I think that was actually one of our games of the week there, and I actually picked right on that one for <laughs> once. Well, don't go away just yet. After the break, we have our upcoming schedule and conference standings here on High School Roundup. Election Day, November 2nd, 2021 is just around the corner. Check your status or find your polling place. Visit calu.edu backslash vote to find links to all this information. Check out this non-partisan website, vote411.org, put together by the League of Women Voters to preview your ballot so you can know what's on it ahead of time. The last day to register to vote in the state of PA is October 18th, 2021. And the last day to request a mail-in or absentee ballot is October 26, 2021. Hey Johnny, why do you look so sad? Well, no, I'm not sure how my friends and family back in Gibbon Glade, Pennsylvania can keep track of all our CUTV programming when they can't watch. Well, Johnny, they could subscribe to our new CUTV and Friends podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Hey, thanks, Noel! Here on CUTV Sports One, my name is Peyton Trollinger. Alongside of me today is my great director, Gary Smith here. <laughs> it sounds like you want more close-up, man. <laughs> Jeez, oh, is. <laughs> yeah, but uh, like I said, filling in for Johnny today, so I had to get some car work done. So happy to sit here talk high school football with you. And, you know, we just saw the scores, Peyton. Uh, let's take a look at these schedules because we're getting into the last uh, couple weeks here of the regular season. And there are some great matchups this Friday night. Indeed, there are here. So let's take a look at the 1A Tri-County South for this Friday. We have the Bearcats of Bentworth traveling to Avella. Then we have a game of the week here, Carmichael's versus California. I am very excited about that one. I don't know about you, Gary, but I, I think that's going to be a great game to watch. So definitely make sure you go to that game. We have Mapletown versus Jefferson Morgan. And then our last 1A is West Green traveling to Manesson. Yeah, definitely that Carmichael's California game is big for playoff implication. You think of West Green can hold serve uh, against Manesson uh, and then Jefferson Morgan versus Mapletown. That Jeff Morgan Mapletown game is a Green County rivalry. So uh, be interested to see uh, how the deck is shuffled after this week. But as we're moving on to double A, you know, there's some other game. Actually, Eastern Conference, Greensburg Central Catholic versus Clareton and then Springdale versus Amani Christian. And, and Springdale's a team that can get it done, so that'll be another one. But moving on to double A on the next set, Century Conference, Charlery, Washington, Frazier, Best Center, McGuffey, Shar Houston. I think, knowing you, which game you're going to circle on that? Well, you know, the Cougars and the Prexies, they've been a rival for a while. You know, really just started Washington, just was beating Charlery a lot. We finally got the win in 2018. Ever since then, though, the Prexies have been on top. So, I think I know what's going to happen, but you never know with high school football. That's true. And any Friday night can be a, a special Friday night for an upset. And moving on to the next set of schedules, uh, 3A Interstate Conference, another barn burner of a game right atop, EF Mount Pleasant, South Allegheny, South Park, and then uh, South Moreland, Brownsville. Again, not sure if Browns will have enough players healthy, so uh, check your local news outlets, but Peyton, that Mount Pleasant EF game. That's definitely going to be an interesting game to watch, especially for Elizabeth Ford as they're going to be home. They're going to have the home crowd on their side, and I'm looking forward to 
that EF uh, dubbed for the Pickums. <laughs> As we move on throughout the schedules here, the Greater Allegheny Conference, the 4A, we have Armstrong going to Highlands, Indiana traveling to Hampton, Knox traveling to Plum, and our last one there is Mars versus Greensburg Salem. And uh, I'll tell you what, that Mars Greensburg Salem, I think that's going to be the one to watch. If nothing else, Mars has one of the best nicknames on the Whippeal, <laughs> the Mars Fighting Planet. So moving on to a conference that we know very well, a uh, couple big games here, McKeesport, LH. LH is trying to maintain uh, their season and trying to stay in the, the conversation for playoffs. Ringgold TJ, I mean, you would think Ringgold is going in as a heavy underdog, but it, that's a team that played with a lot of confidence. And, you know, any given Friday, Trinity, Bell Vernon, uh, those are three very important matchups. Yeah, all they all have very big playoff implications for the Big 8 for a oh, conference. I, see what you did there, I got it right this time. Uh, we're going to continue on here to the 5A Big East Conference. Penn Trafford is going to travel up to Connellsville. Uh, like you said earlier, the Warriors have always had a great team, had a great season so far this year. Franklin Regional traveling to Latrobe and Woodland Hills traveling to Gateway. All three of those are conference matchups. More specifically, those two there at the bottom are going to have a bit more implication than the one over at the top. Yeah, and that, out of those last two, you just want to highlight circle, dog ear, uh, that Woodland Hills Gateway matchup. That's historically been uh, a game that you've seen uh, with big implications middle of the season and also sometimes in the playoffs and at Heinz Field or even before that, way back in the day, <laughs> Three River Stadium. But moving on to our last set of schedules here, the non-conference independence, Hollis Hollisburg versus West Mifflin. That's a game West Mifflin could get back on track. Uniontown Carrick, um, again, don't know too much about the City League schools, but Uniontown playing that independent schedule going up to, I don't know if that game is in Carrick. I know they played them twice this year. Uh, Weir West Virginia versus Albert Gallatin and then Yawk versus Valley. Um, I tell you what, I would be interested to see that Uniontown Carrick game. If nothing else, um, you know, Uniontown has already seen Carrick once this year, so maybe they can take what they saw and, you know, adjust and make the changes. It is going to be an interesting game, especially for our you know, non-conference independent games. A lot of really nice games throughout the Whippeal to keep your eye out on. Uh, I don't believe we have any more games scheduled. We're going to take a little bit of a break here. When we come back from the break, we're going to take a look at our conference standings, high school pickems of the week, and we'll see you right back here on CUTV Sports 1. Vulcan Volleyball is back, and you can catch all the action with CUTV and the PSAC Network. After a year away from the court, the Vulcans are set to try and get back to the top of the PSAC. A full slate of action versus such PSAC opponents Gannon, Mercyhurst, Edinburgh, Clarion, Seton Hill, Slippery Rock, IUP, and Pitt Johnstown. Every home game will be live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. And welcome back to High School Roundup here on CUTV Sports One. My name is Peyton Tronger. I'm with Gary Smith. And we're gonna get. Uh, we're just having a great time here at this uh, in the sh uh, studio. We can't talk. <laughs> um, as we get on with our show here, we're gonna take a look at some standings here. Let's uh, take a look at those. And Peyton, we're getting to the time of year that every week is gonna be important for playoffs. But we see, at, and I'm gonna say, surprising West Green team because you know they're a small school. You never know year to year. Uh, but they're up top, four and zero, five and two overall. And then right back underneath Carmichael's California. 3-1, and 3-1, one, and, one, and that game is going to be a huge game. And then Maple Town, Manessin. But I think to see who's going to come out between West Green, California, and Carmichael, that's going to be worth the price of admission every Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that California Carmichael game is going to be a great game to watch. As we go over to our 2A Century Conference, we have the Prexies and the Highlanders up at top 3-0 and in the conference. Washington 6-0, and McGuffey 4-3 and overall. Shark Tears Houston there at third, three and one in the conference, five and one overall. They have had a great season so far. Under them, a three-way tie. You have Best Center, Waynesburg, and Chalray. Excuse me, Best Center is one and two in the conference, one and five overall. 
Then you have Waynesburg and Charleroi at one and three in the conference. Waynesburg two and five, Charleroi one and five. And at the bottom there, Frazier 0 and three in the conference and have not won a game yet, 0 and seven overall. So hopefully they can get right here, at least get a win to, to end 2021. Let's move over to 3A in the Interstate Conference. EF, a very powerful offense. We saw them a few weeks ago, but they're going to collision course with Mount Pleasant, and then you see Southmoreland and South Park, and then uh, there's some teams at the bottom there that are struggling, and that's all we're going to say right now is we'll see what you say about the 4A Conference. <laughs> all right, the 4A Big 8 Conference, Bell Verin sitting nice at top, 4-0 in the conference, 6-0 overall. The Keysport not far behind them, 3-0 in the conference, 6-1 overall. Now Peyton, I'm not a math major, but I see Belvern at 4-0 and Keysport 3-0. That means they haven't played each other yet, and that means that game is going to be insane in a couple weeks, so make sure to check out uh, Peyton and Johnny for that uh, that conversation in a couple weeks, because that is going to be probably for the conference title, and if it's not, I will grow my hair and with curls like you. All right, you heard it here first <laughs> on High School Roundup. <laughs> might have to buy a wig. I don't know. It might take a while, but we go to 5A, 5A Peyton. All righty. The 5A Big East Conference. Penn Trafford sitting at top 2-0 in the conference, 5-2 overall. Gateway, Latrobe, Franklin Regional, and Woodland Hills all 1-1 one one in the conference. And Connellsville, lowly at the bottom, 0-2 in the conference, 0-7 overall. And that's tough for Connellsville. They're a small 5A school uh, right, on the, right on the border there, probably being 4A and playing they're, they're, they're punching out of their weight class right now, so hopefully, again, for all these teams that don't have a win, it'd be nice to see them at least get off the schneid. Uh, and speaking of getting off the schneid, I think we're going to get off the schneid for the, uh, the, the pick-em standings because I, and, you, and this is another reason I'm glad I'm on the set today, no shenanigans. I'm not changing graphics. I am no longer alone in last place. Yep, that is very true. We have Johnny and Bobby D tied at top 14 and 10. Very good job by both of them. Sitting at third is our good friend Doug Glackey, 13 and 11. Then you got your boy, 12 and 12, sitting at 500. I said last week we were going to come back, and I was totally right by that. 12 and 12, Gary's with me at uh, 500 as well. Dylan, under 500, 11 and 13. And then Colin Kirkwood at the very, very bottom at 10 and 14. And he'll come back. I spoke to him yesterday. He's doing his research down there in Frostburg. Uh, and again, he's close enough, he could come up and change the graphics. Dylan's <laughs> got about a seven hour drive to get here. So the ones you gotta worry about changing graphics are basically me and Colin. Uh, but I really think, uh, I hate to say it, I hate to say it, Peyton, but this is gonna be, I think a year Johnny and uh, Bobby D are gonna be uh, duking it out for the fun finale. Most likely, I mean, I'm gonna try my best here. I'm pretty confident with my picks this week. Um, I'm not gonna reveal them just yet. We're gonna keep them. And I'm confident I can change the graphic before the show next week. So we're we're both good doing good. So look for Gary and Peyton to be at the top. But what are the games we have this week? Uh, our pick em games of the week for October 15th, we have Uniontown at Carrick. Then we have a very big game, Carmichael's versus California. Then we have Mount Pleasant versus Elizabeth Ford, McKeesport versus Laurel Highlands, Holidaysburg at West Mifflin, and then Weir High from West Virginia going to Albert Gallatin. A lot of really good matchups. We actually had to put six this time instead of five. It's a chance for me to go six and zero, oh, baby. <laughs> Same yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you one of my picks okay. this week. I'm gonna do it live. I'm going to look at that Carmichael's California game, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pick the Trojans. Uh, we saw them uh, earlier in the season versus Best Center. They can move the ball through the air, and they can also move the ball on the ground. And also that defense, they got worn down a little bit against Best Center, but Best Center, is, that's what they're going to do. They're going to wear you out. I think California will win, and I'll even give the score 20, 26, 26-12 okay. California. 26-12 California, you heard it here first. It's gonna be a tough night for extra points, I think, in that scenario, <laughs> but I'm going 26-12 uh, Kyle Trojans. Pretty confident with that. That's I mean, I, I, I wanna hear, you gotta give us one of your picks now. I'm gonna raise the bar. I'm actually gonna disagree with you on that oh, one. Oh, okay. I'm actually okay. gonna go with my boys and uh, Carmichael's, okay. the Mighty Mikes are gonna get the win against California, and you heard it here live, folks. Carmichael's is getting the win. It's going to be a close game. Okay. It definitely will be a close game, but I do believe Mighty Mike's just got that little bit of oomph in them. They've been very hot all season. California's been also very hot, but, you know, Cal uh, Carmichael's has a really nice coaching staff up there, very balanced, like you were saying, and I think they can get the win. 
the only way to find out who wins is uh, either go to the game or tune in next week to High School Roundup. And Peyton, it's been great. I guess we got to give the dang a dorgy, and we got to give it to the big guy that's not here, oh, scheduling some uh, go. garage time during the <laughs> studio time. But uh, seriously, hopefully everything's okay with Johnny's car, the the Gooch Mobile next week. So we'll be. He'll be driving around California with a uh, wind in his hair and a song in his heart, and uh, he'll be back here sitting next to you th next week, and also sitting next to you at Adamson Stadium for some Vulcan football. Yes, sir. And I believe I think that's all the time we have here today. So for everybody in the booth, Pam, Tom, and my co-host Gary, my name is Peyton Trollinger. Thank you for tuning in to High School Roundup here on CUTV Sports One.